Okay. I um, want to update you on some travel for various people, on some meetings, uh, things you've been asking about. Um, so just want to update you on the Secretary General's own travel. Uh, he will go to Geneva for the informal 5 plus 1 meeting on the Cyprus issue, which will be held from the 27th to the 29th of April. As we told you on February 24th, he is convening this informal meeting following consultations conducted on his behalf by a senior UN official, Ms. Ms. Jane Hole Lut, and that, those consultations were being done over the past several months. The purpose of the meeting, as we said at the time, will be to determine whether common ground exists for the parties to negotiate a lasting solution to the Cyprus issue within a foreseeable horizon. Uh, turning to Afghanistan, in a joint statement, uh, the co-conveners of the Istanbul Conference on Afghanistan Peace Process said that in view of the recent developments and after extensive consultations with the parties, it has been agreed to postpone the conference to a later date when conditions for making meaningful progress would be more favorable. The statement notes that Turkey, Qatar, and the United Nations had planned to co-convene a high-level conference in Istanbul from the 24th of April to the 4th of May, with the participation of the representatives of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Taliban. The aim was to add momentum to the negotiations that started in Doha last September to achieve a just and lasting peace in Afghanistan. The statement stresses that Turkey, Qatar, and the UN will resolutely continue their earnest efforts to achieve peace in Afghanistan. Uh, and on Myanmar, uh, the Secretary General welcomes the convening of the upcoming ASEAN leaders meeting on April 24th, which is set to discuss the current situation in Myanmar. As the Secretary General highlighted in his remarks to the Security Council this week, ASEAN's role is crucial as the region faces an urgent crisis in Myanmar. The Secretary General continues to appeal for a resolute international response grounded in a unified effort. He urges ASEAN leaders to help prevent an escalation of the crisis and possible grave humanitarian implications beyond Myanmar's borders. The UN will remain a vital partner of ASEAN and will lend its full support to its efforts in Myanmar. The Secretary General Special Envoy Christine Schragner Bergener remains in the region and will be in Jakarta to engage ASEAN leaders on the sidelines of Saturday's meeting, uh, focusing on a political solution. Also on Myanmar, the UN Population Fund in the country uh, today said that the rights of women and girls in Myanmar, including their rights to live a life free from violence and intimidation, must be upheld at all times. The agency stressed that military and security forces must refrain at all times from violence against women, girls, and young people. Perpetrators must be held accountable. As of Monday, the UN Human Rights Office said that at least 741 women and children and men have been killed in fe uh, since February 1st. This includes 52. Uh, children. Also want to flag that tomorrow the Secretary General will be taking part in the climate summit organized by the United States President Joseph Biden. He will be sending uh, will be sharing his remarks with you under embargo later today. And on a related news today, the UN Special Envoy for Climate Action and Finance, Mark Carney, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change uh, Champions, and the COP26 Presidency launched the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. The alliance unites over 160 firms from new and existing initiatives, including the Net Zero Assets Managers and Assets Owners Alliance, to accelerate the transition to net zero emission by 2050 at the latest. More information on uh, the interweb. And this morning, the Secretary General spoke by pre-recorded video message at the launch of the second World Oceans Assessment. He said that we must transform our relationship with the ocean, the life support system of our planet. The findings by scientists are alarming, he said, adding that the second assessment warns that many benefits that the ocean provides to humankind are increasingly being undermined by our own actions. He urged countries to heed this warning and to work together through joint research capacity and development and sharing of data, information, technology to sustain and manage our oceans. Together, we can foster not only a green, but also a blue recovery from the pandemic and also help ensure long-term resilience and sustainable relationships with the ocean. Um, Quick update on St. Vincent's and the Grenadines following yesterday's briefing. 
In response to the government's request for international assistance and the co in coordination with the UN Resident Coordinator's Office and the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, a 13-person joint environment mission from the UN Environment Program and the UN Office for Coordination Affairs is deploying to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The team, which will be deployed for three weeks, is made up of six environmental specialists with expertise in geology, ash management, environmental pollution, ecology, and green response. Other team members will assist with liaison, team management, and logistics. Plans are also underway to dispatch additional experts to Barbados to work closely with the team deployed in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The UN presence is growing gradually in uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but access remains difficult, requiring support for military aircrafts and other types of vessels. Moving on to Ethiopia, our colleagues are telling us that while there has been some recent improvements in the humanitarian access in Tigray, the situation in the region remains alarming with active conflict in some areas uh, restricting humanitarian movement and response. Last week, insecurity in the Adigrat uh, area of Tigray's east zone reportedly impacted the movement of more than 20 relief trucks. We're also concerned about worsening food insecurity in conf in, if conflict continues and disrupts the next planting season, which is coming up. Despite challenges, humanitarian partners are scaling up the response. So far, more than 1.5 million people have received double allocations of food rations in 12 targeted districts, and nearly 246,000 people have been supplied with emergency shelter and non food items. We urgently need more funding and safer unimpeded access to scale up the humanitarian response to help all impacted people. An estimated 4.5 million people need life-saving assistance in Tigray. These estimates are according to the Tigray Interim Administration. Yesterday, as you may have seen, the Secretary General met virtually with counterparts in the African Union, the European Union, and the League of Arab States gathering in the Libyan Quartet. The Quartet is a communique issued uh, in a communique issued afterward express its full support for the efforts of the Presidency Council, the Government of National Unity, and other unified national institutions to implement the Libyan Political Dialogue Road Map. Uh, Libyan Dialogue Forum Roadmap and successfully complete Libya's democratic transition. The Quartet condemned the continuing violations of the UN arms embargo and emphasized that all external military intervention in Libya is unacceptable. They called uh, in this regard for full compliance with the arms embargo and the immediate and unconditional withdrawal of all foreign forces and mercenaries from the entirety of Libya's territory. That uh, statement was shared with you. I was asked outside of the room about an attack in Côte d'Ivoire that took place earlier today. And I can tell you the Secretary General notes with concern the attack perpetrated by unknown individuals against an Ivoirian military base in Abidjan in the early hours of the 21st of today. He condemns the attack as well as any attacks on state institutions. And a quick COVAX uh, daily update for you. Uh, UN teams are supporting vaccination efforts across the Pacific in uh, Fiji. Uh, the country received its second batch of 24,000 vaccine in uh, just two days ago, with more on the way. Samoa has kicked off its vaccination campaign with the pri country's prime uh, minister receiving his first dose, and Samoa received 24,000 doses through COVAX earlier this month. Moving on to Af the African continent, earlier this week, the Democratic Republic of the Congo kicked off its vaccination campaign, beginning with high-priority groups. The country received more than 1.7 million doses of the vaccine last month. The UN team on the, in the country is supporting authorities with both vaccinations and addressing wider impacts of the pandemic. And as of today, nearly 41 million doses have been shipped to 118 countries and territories through the COVAX facility. WHO, UNICEF, and others are helping with the logistics. And today of all day is World Creativity Day and World Innovation Day, they're one and the same. Uh, the day aims uh, to raise awareness for the role that creativity and innovation play in all aspects of human development. UNESCO uh, stresses that cultural and creative industries should be part of the economic growth strategies. UNESCO notes that these industries are among the most dynamic sectors in the world economy, generating 2.25 billion revenue and 29.5 million jobs worldwide. Uh, um, uh, 
I will now turn to you. Uh, uh, let's be creative. Betul. And then two questions, Steph. One on the Cyprus dispute. Uh, we know that these talks in Geneva will not be negotiations, and the SG wants to see if there is a common ground. But does he have any message for the parties? And the second question will be on Libya. Can you clarify if the ceasefire mechanism will be monitoring the withdrawal of foreign fighters? And what nations, countries will be sending monitors? Um. On the, uh, the ceasefire monitors, uh, we're working on the deployment and the, the full recruitment of the, the 60 uh, that were authorized. Um, as soon as we have more details, uh, we will go. But they will, as per usual deployment of UN monitors or people of that sort, they will come from different countries, but they will be operating under a UN umbrella, not their own national umbrella. Their focus will be on the ceasefire monitoring. We will report back as we get information on the withdrawal of uh, mercenaries and other uh, armed forces, but that is not the focus of the work of these monitors. Um, on, uh, on Cyprus, I think the, what the Secretary General is, is he will be, um, he will, uh, I mean, the aim, as I said, is to determine whether common ground exists for the parties to negotiate a lasting solution. Um, we will, we hope that the parties come with um, creativity um, to these, uh, to this very informal meeting. Uh, can I just follow up on Libya? Will there be any monitors from the countries involved in the conflict or there won't be any? It's a very good question. Uh, the monitors will come from different countries and again will operate uh, as UN uh, officials uh, under the under the charter, under Article 100, and so forth. Uh, Celia and then Mr. Bayes. Stefan, did the uh, will the Secretary General talk with Mohammed Idris Davis, who is the son of the late president and who took over the presidency in Chad and is the UN concerned about the future of Barkhane after the death of the president? The future of Operation Barkhane yeah. in Mali? Yeah. Uh, oh. yeah, because I, he, yeah, because he was one of the uh, most faithful help to France. In I, I mean, listen, Operation Barkhane is a French uh, operation. Uh, we are, I'm not aware of any, uh, I mean, there have been no contacts at this point between the Secretary General uh, and the authorities in, uh, in Chad. The, 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 yeah, the, well, the authorities, I mean, the present authorities, new, uh, <laughs> there's one, the authorities. Uh, <clears throat> The Secretary General is obviously, uh, to put it mildly, following the situation there very closely. Uh, our commitment uh, to stand with the Chadian people in their efforts to build a peaceful and prosperous future is unwavering. Uh, as I mentioned, he had uh, been consulting with the uh, African Union. Uh, but at this point, we're also just watching the situation on the ground and see how it evolves. Mr. Bayes. You told us there was quite a large presence in Chad of the UN. I don't know who the senior person is on the ground. Is it the resident coordinator or is there someone else who's in charge? But uh, either way, um, they are obviously reporting back to whoever here, the Secretary General or others. What is, this, what is the UN's picture of the current situation on the ground as you have such a good footprint there and you can hopefully give us a picture? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, our, our footprint on the ground is a humanitarian and development uh, footprint. It is not a, a political mission. Uh, the resident coordinator is the senior most uh, person on the ground. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you that we have any more particular insight uh, that has been uh, reported. Uh, we remain in contact with the relevant uh, actors, uh, but I don't have any insights uh, to share with you at, uh, at this point. Our, our work um, 
our colleagues are continuing their critical uh, humanitarian work, uh, life-saving uh, activities, including around the Lake Province, which, as you know, hosts a large number of people who've been displaced because of Boko Haram uh, activity. Um, and to give you a picture also of, of, of the humanitarian situation in Chad, Chad hosts almost half a million refugees. So UNHCR uh, is there, other UN agencies uh, are there, and internally there are more than 360,000 internally displaced people. So our, our focus is on ensuring that whatever is happening on a political front, our humanitarian work continues. And one on Afghanistan, if I can, the postponement of the um, peace conference in Istanbul. Um, clearly, the major reason is that the Taliban are currently not going to show up. Mm -hmm. um, there are many commentators who say that is because the Taliban may well now consider that <coughs> with the Americans leaving, they can wait things out and win on the battlefield rather than having to negotiate with the Afghan government. Given that, uh, and given the Taliban are the stumbling block right now, what is the Secretary General's message to the Taliban about why they should come to talks? Well, I mean, the, the Secretary's message to all the parties is to engage in fruitful negotiations for the sake of the people of Afghanistan. Uh, we will continue to do whatever we can to support the intra-Afghan negotiations. Okay, Alan. Thank you, Stefan. I have uh, two questions, please. Uh, first, uh, President of Syria, Bashar Assad, stated that he's going to run the president elections this year. Any comments on this? Uh, how will that affect the uh, process of the uh, conflict resolution in Syria? And the second question, mm, the President of Ukraine, uh, Mr. Zelensky, said that he said, had a conversation with the SG. Uh, what did they discuss? Did the mm -hmm. SG make any uh, calls, appeals to him. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I will take them in the order they were received. On Syria, uh, we've obviously seen uh, the announcement that a presidential election will be held on 26 May. Uh, these elections have been called under the auspices of the uh, current constitution, and they're not part of the political process uh, established under Resolution 2254. Uh, we're not involved in these elections. We have no mandate uh, to be. For our part, we will continue uh, to stress the importance of a negotiated political solution to the conflict in Syria. Uh, you should note, and you know, that uh, Resolution 2254 mandates the UN to facilitate a political process that culminates in the holding of free and fair elections in accordance with a new constitution administered under UN supervision to the highest international standards and that are inclusive of all Syrians, including members of their diaspora. Uh, your other question was on uh, Ukraine. Yes, the Secretary General did speak uh, to President uh, Zelensky today. Uh, I spoke to the Secretary General about it a short while ago. Uh, he told me that they spoke uh, about the fight uh, against COVID-19 uh, and the need for great va uh, greater vaccination capacity in Ukraine. They also talked about the situation in the eastern part of uh, Ukraine. The Secretary General, for his part, reiterated the UN's concern with the repeated violations of the ceasefire and the need to avoid all forms of escalation. He also repeated his support for the ongoing efforts towards the full implementation of the Minsk uh, agreements under the Normandy format and the OSCE supported trilateral contact group, as well as with uh, regards to the work of the special uh, monitoring uh, mission. Okay, uh, let's go to those. Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, this may be somewhat out of date, um, but it just came to my attention recently that uh, earlier on, Kiev had been cutting off the water supply to the Crimea and then mm -hmm. permitted water only a few hours per day. Do you know what the current situation no. is? And I, I, I do not, but we can try to check. Okay, uh, Tobias Burns, uh, and then if to some, and then Jennifer. Hi, sir. Thanks very much. Ahead of this uh, big climate summit this week, I'm wondering if the UN has received any information of uh, nationally determined contributions from any of the countries participating, and um, what what specifically is the Secretary General hoping will come out of uh, of the meetings this week? Well, I mean, what he, what he is hoping is 
ways uh, for a clear example of, for, of the nations uh, gathered for new, bold, real commitments, uh, especially on nationally determined, uh, uh, nationally determined um, contributions. Um, I mean, we're, you know, we're seeing the, the continuing worsening impact of, of climate change. Um, I mean, I think the Secretary General was very clear in what he said at the press conference on, uh, on, on Monday. Um, and just to reiterate the need for, for bold and ambitious uh, commitments. And he looks forward to participating in the discussion and uh, to seeing the outcomes. And no, uh, no, no, so, go, go ahead. Yeah, so any, any information or, or uh, have there been any conversations so far between the Secretariat and the U.S. about their, uh, about their intended contribution? Well, I mean, we're, we're waiting to see what comes out of, of the U.S. Uh, we hope that it is bold and we hope that it leads, uh, it leads others to follow suit. Uh, if to some. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I have first a uh, follow up on your uh, serious statement. Um, does that mean, can you clarify or say it in more clear words, if possible? Does that mean that you don't consider the elections to be fair and free? I listen, I think my. Um my words on uh, my words in Syria were uh, pretty clear. I used a lot of them, um, and I think I gave you enough to do a uh, to do your own analysis of of the situation. Basically, the, the I will try to do it in plainer English. Um, we've seen the the decision taken by uh, the announcement made by the government. Uh, the government of the Syrian Arab uh, Republic. Uh, for our part, the, uh, the election is being held uh, under the auspices of the current constitution. They're not part of the political process. We are not uh, uh, involved in the election. We have no mandate to be. So that's a statement of fact. The other statement of fact is that we continue to stress the importance of a political uh, solution to the conflict. And I'm just underscoring for your um, uh, for for your uh, your help the uh, the fact that Resolution 2254 mandates us to facilitate a um, a political process that will culminate in the holdings of free and fair elections in accordance with a new constitution. Then those elections would be administered under UN supervision to the highest uh, standards. You had a second question. Yes, I have a. My question is on um, in this con on this country. So the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mitchell Bishop, welcomed the guilty verdict of uh, in uh, George Floyd's case. But she also noted that reforms to policing departments across the U.S. continue to be insufficient to stop people of African descent from being killed. So uh, do you agree with her statement? What's your position on this? Uh, we, uh, we, there's no... And on sure. Uh, we obviously, uh, we, we welcome the verdict, which is a, a strong message in terms of uh, bringing justice to what happened to George Floyd, to his murder, which was plain to see by everyone uh, on, on video. Um, we have absolutely no issue with what the High Commissioner uh, said and in, in, in the opinions she expressed. And I would remind you that uh, the Secretary General himself had said uh, that we have seen uh, many cases where poli of police violence, that all these cases need to be investigated. And he's always said that police forces around the world uh, need to have adequate human rights training and needs to be an investment in social, uh, in, in this investment, in this, uh, in this training uh, for the police so they can do their job properly in protecting communities. And this applies for the Secretary General, this applies around, around the world. Okay, uh, Ms. Peltz from the Associated Press. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask on the question of the Afghanistan conference, is there any thought about when it might be rescheduled? And what do you think the postponement portends for the prospects of peace and stability there? 
Well, there there is no date that we're ready to. Uh, there's no date that we're ready to announce. Um, Obviously, uh, we would like to see these uh, discussions uh, happening. We'll do whatever we can to support intra-Afghan uh, dialogue. We think that we are convinced that dialogue and a political solution is the most important uh, way to bring peace uh, to Afghanistan. Okay, uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I'll go back to the room. James. Yeah. Um Four UN human rights experts, independent special rapporteurs, have issued a statement about Alexei Navalny. Um, they say that they believe his life is in serious danger, and they're urging his medical evacuation from Russia. Does the Secretary General share those calls coming from these four different top human rights experts? I mean, what what we believe is a that well, I'll say. From, from our standpoint, the Secretary General, as I've said, is following this very closely with concern. Uh, we very much hope that the Russian authorities will provide uh, the right level of medical care uh, for Mr. Navalny in order to avoid the worst. Okay, yes, ma'am. Uh, several weeks ago, Russia recalled their ambassador from Washington after George Stephanopoulos asked a rather provocative question of President Biden, who foolishly responded undiplomatically. And today, I, I see that Russia has asked the U.S. ambassador to leave the country. So what does the U.S., uh, the U.N. have to say about these withdrawals of the highest diplomatic Representation. These are bilateral issues uh, between two member states. We always are working for and hope hope for a positive atmosphere in the dialogue between all member states, but especially between uh, these two very uh, important member states, two members of permanent members of the Security Council, United States and the Russian Federation. Okay, uh, Mr. Sato, are you waving or? Yes, go ahead, Sato, son. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm always waiting. Thank you very much for your pointing me. So my question is about uh, Myanmar uh, uh, in your first statement. Uh, the special envoy, uh, Ms. Wagner, is going to uh, join the side event of the uh, ASEAN summit meeting. And more precisely, uh, what role uh, does Secretary General expect her to play a uh, series of this uh, meeting? And also, is she going to meet with the uh, uh, Myanmar leadership during the ASEAN summit meeting? So just to be clear, she is not participating in the meeting, right? This is an ASEAN meeting. She is not addressing the meeting as a whole. She will be visiting Jakarta while the meeting is going on and using that time to have discussions with various parties who are also uh, in Jakarta. It is, um, it, it's a good way for her to be able in one, in one place uh, to meet many of the key, uh, the key players. Um, as to who she will be meeting, uh, once she meets people, we will have a bit more uh, to say. Okay, uh, sorry, James, and, and then we have two more questions, and then the spokesman for the President of General Assembly is very eager to come to the podium. Um, sorry, I know you just said, I know you just said you weren't going to say who she's going to speak to, but is she endeavoring to have a meeting with the general from Myanmar uh, who will be she, attending the summit because she has been uh, trying to get to Myanmar. He would be an obvious person she, to, I mean, to she try will, to speak She to. will be trying to speak to all the key actors, obviously uh, uh, the representatives of the, of the military who she's been speaking to in the past via email and on the phone uh, would be on that dance card. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a little update on Navalny's story and situation, because right now in Russia they are going, to want, uh, going on massive protests with uh, Russian people demand to release Navalny, and latest news says there, is, there are at least 300 people detained. Will there be any reaction of the United Nations Secretary General on support of freedom of speech and protest in Russia? I mean, the, the Secretary General uh, believes in freedom of speech and the freedom to protest, the freedom to protest peacefully, the freedom to protest to express one's political opinion uh, in every 
member state of this organization. Celia is reaching for her microphone. Go ahead. Yes, uh, but did the Secretary General talk with uh, Putin, uh, the President Putin? Did you really talk to him about the situation? Uh, I, don't, I have to check everything? the last time uh, the Secretary General had a phone call with President uh, Putin. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, uh, Brendan, you are very welcome. All right.